A Quiet Place Day 1 was released in theaters over the weekend, and so I went to go see it, so let's review. A Quiet Place Day 1 is a prequel within the Quiet Place series, in which we go back to the actual first day in which these creatures that are attracted to sound come down, invade Earth, and start killing everybody once they hear a bunch of noise. And they crash land in New York City, and we follow this lady named Sam who has terminal cancer and while this silent apocalypse is happening she is trying to survive along with Joseph Quinn's character and her cat. Now if you've watched my review of the first two films you know how I feel about them. I think that first film is such a good film. I do think it has some problems here and there but I thought it was a very inventive film that was made by John Krasinski who is primarily known for comedy but then he tried his hand in filmmaking and tried it with horror and he succeeded. But what I love most about it is not just the concept but basically the familiar aspect of it about this family trying to survive this silent apocalypse. And then the second film in which John Krasinski returns to direct again but it's mostly a continuation of that first film. And here I was curious but at the same time concerned because it's like all right we're going backwards we're not going forward and that's usually the case with prequels but given the concept of this film right here I'm like Let's see what they do. And the thing that also gave me pause about this movie is John Krasinski not returning to direct. I don't even think he wrote it. He did produce it. But instead, this time around, this film is directed by Michael Sonorski, who made Pig, which is a movie with Nicolas Cage that I never saw. But Michael Sonorski is given the reins of director and writer, so let's see what he did. And I'll say this was a pretty decent prequel. I don't think it's the best within the series, but I think it does goes back to the essence of what made that first film so good. And it's not necessarily, well, the, it is the concept, but it's also the fact of this family trying to survive this apocalypse. It's a very human story. And I think that's what Michael Sonorski did with day one is he tried to make a human story that just happens to take place in this apocalypse that we're already familiar with. In the monsters, they do return in this movie and they do all the same things that we saw them do in the first two films. They don't add anything to these monsters to make them more relevant in future films if there is going to be any more. I'll say the, there's not really necessarily enough horror and there's not enough suspense, but like I said, it's more of a human story. And th this movie does take place in New York, which is one of the loudest places in America. So imagine just these alien creatures that kill at the, at the sight of sound and they're going off killing everybody in New York City. That right there is just downright horrifying. Well, I do wish they put more emphasis on the day one aspect of everybody figuring out what these monsters deal is and then figuring out like, oh, they're attracted to sound and then they have to adapt. I mean, there's some elements in there here and there where the military comes in and they come in on the helicopter saying, do not make any sound. I repeat, do not make any sound. They will kill you if they hear noise. Come to the ocean. They cannot swim. Like they do stuff like that here and there, but not too much emphasis. But instead, we focus on our two leads, Lupita Nyong'o and Joseph Quinn. Of course, I love me some Lupita Nyong'o. She is a wonderful actress. This is probably my second favorite horror performance of her. The first being when Jordan Peele's Us and here she continues to show why she is a very diverse actress because in this movie she plays a, a patient with terminal cancer and so she's already knocking on death's door. So when this apocalypse happens, she's like, my days are already numbered so this means really nothing to me. And so the journey she goes on, she just wants to do something that's a little bit nostalgic for her. And then meanwhile, Joseph Quinn's character, who you may remember from Stranger Things, and he's going to be the new Johnny Storm in the Fantastic Four. But on this day, he had a job interview that went south and all this shit started happening. And so now he's just finding someone to latch on to and just trying to survive. Everybody's talking about the cat. I mean, the cat didn't really annoy me or bother me. But if you have an issue with the cat in this movie, hey, I understand. The John Min Hansu returns in this movie as the character he played in the last film and he's really only in like two or three scenes he's just mainly here just to provide some franchise continuity i think the best way i can describe this movie is the same way that another movie youtuber jeremy john said this film a quiet place day one is the batman arkham origins of the acquired place series because you remember in the Batman Arkham games in which the first two games and then you have the third game which is a prequel that takes place before the first two games. And that's what A Quiet Place Day 1 is. And I think that sums it up perfectly. 
I'd say you don't have to rush out to go see this movie, but if you do see it, I'd say there is some merit to be had with this movie, but if you didn't really enjoy it, I understand, but for me, it's the human aspect of this movie that worked for me. I'm going to give A Quiet Place, day one, the thumbs up emoji.